So what is your favourite thing about Belgium? My favourite thing about Belgium? Probably... Shouldn't take this long to think about it. Probably the waffles. You don't get cheats like these without liking the waffles and fried food or the Belgian chocolate or the Belgian beer. There's lots of good things beer. about, but they all end up in your stomach. There's got to be other good things about Belgium other than things that Rallycross? you consume. Well, I hope so. Should be good. Should be a good weekend. Belgian beer is good though, isn't it? A Belgian chocolate's good. Yeah. And fried stuff. Have you ever had any Belgian fries? What? Yoppy sauce. Frites with loads of mayonnaise. Yoppy sauce, mate. You don't want the mayonnaise. Yoppy sauce. What's yoppy sauce? It's like a sweet... It's like a yellow sweet sauce. It's nice. It's not like a barbecue. It's... it's try it. So okay, when we used to race at Mass Mechelen, it was always... Where? Mass Mechelen. Where the European <laughs> championship used to race. Yeah. Frites and mayonnaise. Like, gallons of it. Well, lots of mayonnaise as well. But, like, for me, it's yoppy sauce. Right, okay. Well, oh, I'll, I'll me, try that later. Tell me about Mete. Is it Mete? Mete? I've always said Mete, but that's... Mete? Yeah. Yeah, tell me about Mete. Cool, isn't it? Nice to be back here, World Championship. Rather than uh, the World Championship drivers driving an RX2E last year, we were all know the reasons why that was. But the weather was biblical last year. Brutal. It was so wet and mm. it was absolute carnage. They've made loads of revisions to the track. Which uh, you've looked at in your in your I track piece. I actually think turn one is going to be quite fruity because they've opened it up at the top and then it nips, so you can carry way more speed into turn yeah, one. Yeah, for sure. And the way that they've changed the curbs through that first section, so there's a shallower curb and then the, the big danger curb is, uh, I think, good. You can take a load of risk there, but there's a high penalty. Yeah. There's a lot to it. Technical place. Go, really technical. go and watch the track walk with Johan Christofferson. He was very good. He is very good and. Uh, he can be, he's the most analytical person, and he's also able to convey that in a really nice way. So yeah, yeah. he's uh, and it's so interesting, off camera chatting with him about all the all the tiny things and the details he remembers is just on another planet. And I think that's really what makes the difference between and a good old boy. Yeah, with a horrific moustache. Like he's gone for the shave up the side and the moustache here. Preparing like, for November because it's going to take a while. Yeah, like goose. But he pulls it off. To be fair to him, very quickly before you go off on your paddock walk. Let's talk about the championship. 3-1 to Christofferson. We've had four rounds so far. Johan's won three of them. Nicholas Gronholm's won one of them. And arguably, Johan was kind of forced into not winning one of them as well. Chaos in, in Belgium. Uh, Belgium? We Hungary. are in Belgium. Hungary. Hungary on the first day. Yeah. In the first corner, loads of action. And on day two, there was plenty of action too, wasn't there? And I think this sort of circuit here in, in Mete can, the same. can have that as well. Yeah. And really, I think that's what's going to make the difference. A bit of kerfuffle in those scenarios can make a big difference, can't it? Kerfuffle? Because on, on paper, Christofferson... You were educated better than me. Kerfuffle. I've forgotten it all. <laughs> and I wasn't, anyway. <laughs> In my dad's words, <laughs> our cat did more revision for his GCSEs than I did. Um, yeah, I think it's going to need some sort of drama. Yes, the CD team have made a big step forward this year. I also think the tyres maybe come towards them a bit with a new Hoosier yeah, tyre. Yeah. The Hansons are on the back foot. You can't get away from that. They haven't been on the podium yet this year. And I would have to look back at the, the stats to work out the last time that we got this far into a season without either of them on the podium. The podium yeah. um, Do you know the exciting thing for me? Is the Hansons are getting to the point where they've got nothing to lose, so they'll just be going flat out. CED, as you said, have well, I think they want forward. wins now, don't they? they, like they, the, championship they picture, the, the championship picture is is going away already, so you're just looking at event by event, and that makes your whole uh, your whole outlook a bit different. They need them. For C, sure. CED has made the step forward, and we've seen that both in, with Nicholas's pace, he's obviously taking the win, and Clara. And, and Clara, Clara, for sure. Uh, Clara's made and she's consistently forward. right there now, isn't she? And, and as you said, in Hungary there, this is the first year she's been competitive. She's had podiums before, she's been there or thereabouts, but now she's really there yeah. in the game. Johan, Johan, I still think this circuit will suit the polo. I think 100%. It will suit, yeah, 100%. I think it will suit Johan and OC, but in particular Johan, he'll just get hold of it. He will get hold of this circuit. But when we go to Montalegre, obviously we're up at altitude, Different and that will suit, that will suit yeah. the electrics. Go and do your paddock walk. We could keep talking. I'll take my glasses in case I can't. Uh... People don't want to listen to you and me. They want to listen to the drivers. I wonder how many people skip through that bit. They definitely don't want to listen to me, do they? Let's uh, let's go. Are you waiting for me, or am I going to have to get a lift for someone else? Right. Okay. Thanks for your support, mate. Let's uh, <laughs> let's have a look around. I won't put my glasses on. As we were talking about the Hansons, let's just pop in here, Liam. Apologies if I'm sweaty. It's very humid. 
Kevin Hansen's car. They've been uh, working on setup all day. Watch everyone walk away from me here. Yol's just Yol is chief spotter or was chief spotter in Hungary. There's no one around. Where are the drivers, mate? Oh, there they are. So this is the sort of stuff. This is a bit behind the scenes look, Liam, because I'll try not to get run over. Kevin and Timmy filming for uh, hello, mate. Some sort of AI stuff. Let's have a quick look here. This is a setup patch for CE dealer team. This is Nicholas Gronholm's PWR RX1E. So they'll set this platform up to be perfectly level. And the car drives up onto it on each of these corners. I'm sure they won't mind if we have a look in because we're not showing anything. The wheels sit on these scales so they can adjust the corner weights. And this is a perfect environment also to, to do the tracking, the geometry, because uh, the car is totally square. And with a paddock being you know, naturally not flat. It's, if you were to set the car up where it lives in the paddock here, the, 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 there's inevitably going to be some camber change or some dead surface change that makes it not consistent. Let's see if anyone's around. There is no one particularly around. Oh, I can hear uh, Clara squawking. Classic. <laughs> you guys are so busy. <laughs> Nicholas, hello mate. Hello. What, what's the game? Yahtzee. Oh, what's the score? No, the game, explain the game. <laughs> we don't need to talk about the score. <laughs> Why not? It's not going so well today for me. For you, I guess? Yeah. Okay. No, we don't need to see that. So how does it work? What's the crack? Have you, Have you never played this? No. You try to get as many ones or twos or threes or fours or whatever, and then you have like one pair, two pairs, three of a kind, four of a kind. Okay. And then uh, yeah, from one to five and from two to six, and that's how. And Yatsi is if you get all five of the same. And how often does that happen? Quite often, actually. Mm -hmm. Almost every game. I would say we are professional Yatsi players. Yeah. <laughs> is that due to the amount of time you have on a Friday afternoon in, uh, in events? Yes. I think we play approximately. 20 to 30 games per day. No, not that many. Along with signing caps, Liam, there's a whole load of uh, CE dealer caps that you've uh, meticulously signed ready for the weekend. Looking ahead to Mete, you come here on the back of a, a strong result in, in Hungary. I think it's fair to say that you as a team have taken a bit of a step forward this year over last year. What are your expectations here? Yeah, I mean, for myself, it's been one good result per week and one really bad. So kind of, I think the goal is to have two good races to score some points. It's not looking too good in the standings. So so that's the goal. You don't necessarily need to win, but have two two good days. And Clara, I think uh, Chen and I were just talking in the opener for this. I think you're there now, aren't you? Competitively there every weekend. Does that change your your approach coming in rather than the last two years where you've been building up to have the speed of the other drivers? I mean, yeah, it's a little bit more fun now to come to the race weekends, maybe. But uh, this weekend will be my trickiest, I think, this year, since I've never been here before, and many of the other drivers have been here a lot. So, and it's quite a difficult track. It's quite technical. Uh, you need to really have the rhythm. Uh, and now the weather will also be probably a little bit up, up and down. So it will be tricky, but I'm excited. Uh, and as Niklas says, I think we have had good potential to do even better than than we are doing. So that is the goal this weekend. Thank you. I'll uh, let you continue. You. I'm sure you've got plenty more to uh, do. Cheers, guys. Let's go this way. Liam, make a big effort, CE dealer team, in the, uh, the hospitality side. So this is where all the guests stay. Merchandise available at the back there, teas and coffees. And this is a great opportunity to uh, get a look as a fan. Lots of cars are tucked away at the back of an awning. But uh, yeah, CE dealers team make a big effort to, to let their fans and guests see what's going on, which they should be commended for. I think Clara just won again, judging uh, by that, if you hear the excitement. All right, let's pop over here, see if Isaac Shukvist is around. It's quite a spread out paddock. If you have a look up there, Liam, it's uh, a big old paddock way in the middle. That's Eric Farin just uh, 
disappearing the other side of the car. Thanks for that, mate. Cheers for your support. Isaac. Ah, nice, man. All good? Yeah, not bad. Um, Mete, you were here last year. D difficult weekend, wasn't it, last year in the rain? I think you've had a an up and down season so far, haven't you? You've had some great pace, but then some, some struggles as well. Just talk us through those first couple of rounds. Yeah, I mean, as you said, uh, the pace has been there for sure, but Niels has found something we haven't yet. But I'm staying positive and we are still in the fight, of course. So everything can happen. Uh, the team is working flat out and I do everything I can as well. So I'm humble for the challenge, of course, but uh, I think it, it will be good this weekend. It feels great to be back here. You had a difficult weekend here last year, I think, from memory, and the conditions were all over the shop. I guess for a driver, you're hoping for a bit more consistency from the track conditions here? Yeah, I mean, last last year, the weekend down here was one of the shittiest weekend I've had, actually. So I think the only thing I can think about now is the revenge to get to get in the, this weekend. and. Um, Let's see what the track condition is also giving us. As they said uh, during the briefing, they have done some small changes, which I only see as a positive thing. Uh, I'm staying humble for the challenge once again as well for this track, but uh, I think it's going to suit me well. It's a tricky one, but hell fast corners as well. So ah, it feels great. Good luck, mate. Thank you. See you on track tomorrow morning. Thanks. Cheers, Isaac. We'll uh, scoot away. Chassis number nine, that is, if anyone's interested. From the uh, RX2E stable, let's just have a quick look over here, Liam, and see if the local hero is around. I don't think he is. Some of the QEV guys. So this is Cobra Powers, former RX3 champion, son of former supercar racer, RX1 as it would be called now, racer, Kum Powers. Cobra has raced in RX2E before. He raced in the... Nürburgring round in 2022, maybe? Did we go there in 22? 21. Can't quite remember when that was. But yeah, he has raced in RX2E before and uh, of course won RX3 <laughs> using a livery very similar to that. In fact, that was one of his previous cars. Let's have a quick chat over here. Nicholas Gellens, how are you, mate? Welcome to the Paddock Walk and uh, welcome to, to European Rallycross for this year. How have you been enjoying your RX3 experience so far? Oh, so far, yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, honestly, good race, good fighting. Can only enjoy. These cars are amazing, aren't they? The uh, the Volland Audis. I've been lucky enough to drive one in um, Montalegre before, and the, the chassis is phenomenal. The engine isn't like a, an old school Super 1600 because it pulls throughout the rev range, so they're they're a real pleasure to drive. Oh yeah, they're amazing. I love it. Honestly, uh, one of the best cars I ever drove. So I'm very happy with them. You you come from Antigua. You, you've been travelling over for the events. You've been staying in Europe a bit as well. How how is the uh, the motorsport scene different here to at home? Um, at home in Antigua, it's very different. Um, they love drag racing. We also have a, um, a rallycross track, but it's a um, folder track, so it's more autocross. Uh, but people have more interest for um, show cars and uh, drag racing. But it, we have a good scene over there. It's nice. And how are you enjoying European rallycross overall? I guess you, you've never been to one of these tracks, I don't think, before racing at, so a lot of it's learning and, I guess, trying to, to build for the future. Yeah, the um, only track I've been able to practice on is uh, in France. Um, but uh, sadly the race got cancelled, so no, uh, every race is the first time I'm driving on a track, so it's a lot of learning, but it's nice. Uh, it's hard to keep up with the others who have experience, but I'm enjoying and I'm being able to do it so far. So. And for the future, would you like to come back and, and use that experience into, into next year? Oh, of course, definitely in the year after, and we'll see how it goes from there, definitely. Cool, thank you, mate. Thank you. If you're in the paddock, make sure to come and grab a sticker. I love a car sticker. So, uh, yeah, come down and do that. The Volum Racing team with their plethora of Audis. There you go, Liam. Don't fall over. Oh, I don't know if I'd be able to talk for laughing if you did, so uh, please don't do that. Let's head to KMS and see, uh, let's see who's about there. Richard Brown there talking to Nicholas Dubenard. Oh, there's Niels Anderson. Let's have a chat with him quickly. I love that. Niels Anderson, uh, we've, ju we've just been talking to Isaac Schuckvist to, uh, we're saying you found something this year that he hasn't really got an answer for at the moment. 
you come on the back of the winning the championship. I know we talked about you winning the championship, no wins, blah blah blah. But your consistency and pace has been has been impressive this year. Do you feel like you've you found something? I'm sure you're not going to tell us what it is to to be delivering like that. A lot of practice here in the on there putting the laps in it's very important that to stay in with the thanks oh thanks for that help no but i mean honestly it's been a lot of analyzing the year that was trying to learn the maximum of what we did there both of not only what i did but also what michaela did and when juan and Ole christian jumped into the cars so i think all of those bits and pieces i think of how to maximize that and I think I maybe ended up in a good place for this year. I guess that shouldn't be forgotten, that hadn't occurred to me before, but your, your teammates with, with uh, Johan and Ole Christian in, in the team at the moment, but Johan obviously gained a lot of knowledge of these RX2E cars and we can't get away from the fact that he's such an amazing analytical character, so I guess what he learned last year can probably help you a bit, yeah. Yeah, for sure, and he was transferred a lot while we were discussing stuff in both South Africa and Hong Kong. He was uh, good talks with the team on how to let's say maximize the performance of this car specifically so it was a good learning for me thinking in maybe another direction than I did with with the team before uh, before we did those races so I, it was very important for this year okay mate good luck I might just take that if you don't mind <laughs> enjoy your John Deere let's uh, let's jump in here quickly Young Christophson, I know we heard from you earlier in the in the track walk, but we didn't talk about your your facial features. What's going on there, mate? I'm thinking of what's going on with him. He should drive electric. Yeah, but if you give a child a vehicle with a horn, he's going to want to use it, isn't he? Proper diesel, John Deere as well. What happened? You've become a bit of a, a on the battery, <laughs> like you. <laughs> Fair, but you've become a bit of a an agricultural machine specialist recently, haven't you? That's why you like the John Deere. Ah, yeah. Yeah, actually now in the free time, I have uh, changed the, how do you say, the entry road to my house. Driveway, I guess. Yeah, driveway. So I, I swap it from the big road to a bit smaller road first, and then over the, where the, the lawn used to be. So now I can close it to the big road, so Colin can go even more bonkers with the quad bike uh, around the house. The life of a professional racing driver. Yeah, but I, I do like to drive excavator. It's really cool, actually. Uh, it's very difficult, but uh, it's a big challenge. And uh, yeah, it took some time before I got used to it, but now it's not so bad. And obviously no time to, to shave when you're, you're doing that sort of thing, even. Exactly. And I also, standing here now, recognize that I have a different... Uh, you see that I have a different lever on the back compared to Ole Christian's car. I, I thought it just wasn't finished. Ole Christian? On, on, on Ole Christian's. Yeah, I'm not sure. You can ask Kevin. He used to be behind both of these cars. He can probably tell you. It is significant, though, isn't it, to have some slightly different visual features? Because uh, certainly for us, it's, it's tricky to tell. And I know Tommy's a brilliant spotter, but occasionally has got the cars confused in the past. Uh, yeah, but I used to have a white roof. Do I now? No, I don't. No. I used to have a white roof since uh, Papa told me in Q2 Barcelona 2017 to take the Joker every lap and I took the Joker on the first lap because he, he swapped my and Pete's car with each other. So he was like Joker lap, Joker lap, I said I already been to the Joker. So that's why I started to use the white roof and I had white roof on the electric car so uh, I don't know why I don't have it now actually. Happens to the best of us though getting that bit of, uh, bit of confusion. Yeah it does. Uh, and yourself, ever joke at the wrong time? Uh, I did the joker lap uh, in Tier, which was not uh, a call from Papa, because I thought that uh, it was the last lap, but it wasn't. And I forgot to take the joker lap in Portugal uh, 2017 Q2 as well, but I'll try not to do that again. Maybe you could and uh, give everyone else a chance. I think it's pretty ominous this weekend. Uh, the Polo should be well suited to this track in Mete. Uh, yeah, I think so. I th think it should be OK. Seems like uh, the top speed going into T1 is quite similar to Hullius and uh, New Year Ad, uh, So that should be OK. If it's a longer start straight, it's more difficult for us. But this one should be all right. And then on track, we have two uh, yeah, hard accelerations on tarmac, uh, the back straight and the finish straight. But I think it should be OK. I think New Year Ad was definitely 
definitely our strongest track uh, over the season. We don't know China yet, but uh, here it should be should be okay still. But uh, yeah, let's see. I, I think also our competitor still has a lot of potential to develop very quickly if they get to understand the tire and stuff. So uh, yeah, you never know. We just uh, try to to maximize our performance, and uh, also I have to try and stay out of a bit more trouble in, in places uh, during the weekend. So, but we'll see. I'm looking forward. Thank you, mate. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Cheers, Johan. Let's have a pop over here to the European Rallycross Championship leader quickly because he's got a different car in the tent this weekend, Patrick O'Donovan. So this is Patrick's regular car. This is a Peugeot Sport built car, and this is a 2018 Plus. So this is the car, or the, the type of car that was introduced for Julius in 2018. This is Ollie O'Donovan's car for the weekend. This is a 2018, so this was the car that was used at the start of that year. This is actually the, the same car as uh, the one that Sebastian Loeb won here with in, uh, in Mete when Johan Christophson got squeezed into the wall. Let's uh, just sneak in here and speak to Ollie Donovan quickly, because of course Ollie's been racing the Proton Iris so far this year. Switch to the Peugeot for this weekend. If I could interrupt, mate. Um, car looks stunning, very similar to Patrick's, but but different and uh, yeah, new look for this weekend overall. Absolutely, hell yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, completely different. I have no idea what's going to happen when I drop the clutch tomorrow morning on free practice, but uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So for, for context, you had a few issues in, in testing in Portugal and there hasn't been the time for the for the team to get... You went to a testing in Portugal after Hungary, didn't you? So by the time the team get back to the UK and, and re-prep the cars, it just wasn't feasible to get the car ready in time. So you've taken on Yanis's car for the for the last two rounds and you haven't tested it. No, no, we, the, the deal was, was done with Yanis, I think, last Friday morning. So by the time we got everything organised, the car down to Germany, got picked up from Germany to here. I arrived here yesterday, sat in the car, made some adjustments to the pedals, the wheel, the seat, done the launch, happy with all that. So it's all very last minute, a couple of days and like three days to prep the car and get ready for me. You have some history here. You drove the, your Fiesta for the first time here, I think, in 2015. So uh, you know the track, and I guess it's just trying to acclimatise as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know the track. I mean, OK, it's not a great track for overtaking on. I think everything has to be done in the first 200 metres here after it becomes a procession. But um, to be fair, I do like the track in, in the back of it. It's quite a simple track. It's not a technical track by any means. Yeah, the Fiesta was my debut here. It was good. I enjoyed it. So let's hope I can have a good time with the Peugeot here. Good luck, mate. I'm uh, sure you'll enjoy it. Patrick O'Donovan has just snuck through as well. Patrick, what advice can you give your dad now you're in it? OK, the car's not exactly the same, we know that. They're slightly different in specification, but they look pretty similar, and uh, I guess it's not so far away from, from your car. What, what advice can you impart on, uh, on Ollie for this weekend? Yeah, just have fun. Um, the, the cars, I mean, Dad drove it yesterday a little bit, and... Uh, the, well, I say a little bit less than a mile, but uh, it's very easy to drive. It's like sitting in an armchair, and it's just super nice. Um, so just make sure you hit your apexes and just have fun. That's, that's all you can really give, isn't it? The world's fastest armchair, though. The world's, it could be the world's fastest armchair, that is true. It is, it's comfy to drive, but it is fun. You drove here last year, conditions were, were awful when they were really wet and, and, and muddy for most of the weekend. You come in with a championship lead. How do you approach a weekend like this where you haven't driven at this circuit in inconsistent conditions? Um, I guess the same as any other weekend, really. I mean, I'm not, I'm not coming here with like a massive pressure of um, like championship uh, lead on your back and things like that. I'm, I'm just here to enjoy driving a supercar, and I think no matter where you are in the world, you're always going to enjoy driving a supercar. And this track's really nice because it's super technical. Uh, it does look like just two straights with a few corners in between, but I mean, it's it's really difficult. When you get it onto that back straight and you're trying to come through everything and hit, hit, hit all your points with the moving gravel underneath and one of the fastest few corners uh, I've ever raced on anyway. So it's, um, no, it's interesting and exciting, so I'm looking forward to getting out of there. Thank you, mate. We're looking forward to it as well. Let's just jump in here. Sorry, Peter. We're uh, just jumping in and speak to uh, Kenneth quickly. I have. Hello, mate. I haven't seen you yet, actually. I um, we, we can't get away from the fact this has been a, a difficult start to the year for you. I, I, I was saying to Chenny before, I need to look at the stats, but it's a long time since you got to this stage and, and have had Neva driver on the podium. What can you have realistically done between Hungary and, and here in Belgium to try and, to try and change that? Yeah, of course, we have reconsidered why we are not on the podium. And so, and of course, it's a lot of small things there. And you need, you make your luck, of course, but you need also some of that. We, what we did, was we had a half a day of a test with both cars in Hungary directly after the race. So we, we found some things there. 
which I hope definitely will help us, but how far it will take us, I don't know. Let's see. When we are on the grid, then into the first corner and then on, on lap time, of course. But hopefully it takes us forward. The qualifying results haven't really translated into final results, have they? Kevin's been on pole, was on pole both days in, in Hungary, wasn't he? I guess that's a little bit how the, the qualifying system works, but you were still there and it just didn't work out come the finals. But it's just about maximising other people's misfortune as well sometimes. Yeah, you, we know rallycross can be like that. It's just that we have had four races and we had both cars in the finals, all four races, and still no podium. And that's a little strange. But of course, it's open for a lot of improvements. So hopefully we can get there. And I think both drivers are very hungry to get, get on the podium again. So. You obviously raced here a lot in the past. Uh, Sebastian won with you in Sebastian Loeb won with you in 2018 in in Patrick. I can't remember if it was Patrick's car or not, but anyway, no, it wasn't. Might have been Yanis's car, whatever. But you, you've been here a lot. Last year you were here with the RX2 E cars, and so were KMS. But does that help at all coming here because of that big break from being here with the World Championship in 2018? To have the knowledge and to have been here before helps, but I mean the, the new drivers that are haven't been here they catch up rather yeah. quickly also, so I don't think in the end of the of the race it really matters so much. Of course we have some experience with the gravel and so, but it's not the same this year as last year for example. So hopefully it's not that rough as it was last year, and that was quite hard conditions. And uh, I think we will still see some roughness and some roads, ruts out there, but uh, in a better way. Finally, uh, you and I were at Lyndon Legend Festival uh, a month or so ago, and you were driving uh, Will Gollop's old Peugeot 306 that Ollie O'Donovan owns. And then we saw a, a picture of you having tested the, uh, the the very latest RX1 e car from from your own team. How was how was that experience around Nirad? Niran is a very challenging circuit, of course, you, you know, to be quite determined. And you don't jump into one of these cars and make a good lap time, that's for sure. Uh, but it was good to know, uh, get the feeling what the, what the drivers, Timmy and Kevin, are speaking about during the week and what is the weakness, where is the problems, where is the positive things. And now I have better understanding. And also for the tyres, you know, it's quite different compared with the, with the previous tyres we had. So I also have a much better feeling of that, that hopefully can help a little when we talk in the engineering and set up room. And in the, and in the spotter tower, maybe you can uh, push them a bit harder now. <laughs> we will see. Sometimes it's better not to push also, but let's see. I, I have difficulty not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kenneth. We'll uh, see you this weekend. Let's um, have a, a pop down here, Liam. Oh, it's starting to rain again. Liam's giving me the little wrap-up signal. So let's see if we can find one more person before we, before we finish. This is uh, Munich Motorsport with Rene's stunning new set of beef, and I don't think we've seen the ultimate potential from that car yet because it is very, very good, and Rene on his day can really contend as well. Laszlo Kish coming here again after uh, his home round in Hungary. Speaking of home rounds in Hungary, Matteo Benio had a great result at his home event. He's not here at the moment. That ex Albertec racing car that he drives, the Peugeot 208. Of course, lots of Peugeot 208s, aren't there? Much like the car that Anthony Pell Friend drives. Now, we go past Anthony's awning a lot, don't we? And he's never about. I just saw him on his bike before, so I suspect he's not here again either with his uh, Raptor team run by DA Racing. He is indeed not here, so uh, we'll give it a miss. We will catch up with you at some point, Anthony. Let's see if you're around. Oh, can't see you. Done a disappearing act. The Moses, father and son, they were quick and hungry, weren't they? Lots of Hungarian support for the championship, which is absolutely brilliant. Funny how it ebbs and flows over the history of time, which nationalities are supporting European rally across at different periods. Got some more RX3 cars over there, some returnees in RX3 for this weekend. And Lima Tynan and Mikko Wickenen here on the end. Let's, uh, I know we speak to Mikko a lot, but since there's not loads of people about, let's uh, see if we can grab Mikko. Here he is, doing all the jobs of a racing driver. Mikko, uh, you've raced here before, haven't you, in the, in the Hyundai? How much are you looking forward, Hyundai even, how much are you looking forward to, to this weekend and uh, hopefully in some nice dry weather? Hopefully dry weather. I don't know. I, I, I kind of like the track. It, was, it wasn't easy last year. First time here and it was a mixed conditions and so on and so on. But, but I think I like it.
it's on the list where <laughs> let's say favorite favorite tracks. We spoke to you early on in the in the paddock walk, I think, on the Friday in in uh, Hungary, and you were very honest and said that it takes you a while to to learn. And I think that's probably a bit unfair on yourself because you were you were pretty much there immediately. Does it make a big difference to you personally coming back to somewhere like this, having been here last year, even if the conditions are very different? Yeah, I think last year we we draw in wet wet and dry conditions, so it's it's a huge confidence boost for me that I have been driving here before. So I don't know whether I'm whether I'm harsh or anything to my compared to myself, but anyway, still that's that's how I feel. You know, sometimes it's like a Hungary. It was a really difficult track for me to learn, but at, at the end of the day, on Sunday when we ended, you know, I, I had a really confident feeling about the track, and I'm looking forward to go there there you know again and but 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 the learning process it's not not the easiest for me and how much you enjoy uh, oh Mikko has a, a Periclin Saab 93 for sale if uh, if anyone will be interested you you're, you're a big rallycross fan you've got several two-wheel drive rallycross cars you're uh, you're you're an anorak like I am uh, how much are you enjoying being part of this championship this year especially with two cars and and Mika Limitainen has been really quick as well it, it, what's the feeling like in the team yeah, I'm like it's a, it's a hobby for me, and that's why I do it because it's fun. So obviously we are having a lot of fun. So that's why we we are we are we always enjoy coming over here, and it's special when we are, when we are racing in good good old tracks. That's that that gives the joy. Cool. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Let's uh, let's just pop over here, Liam, and see the view from the paddock, which is pretty good for. Uh, for the spectators, I'm going to take a seat. Sorry to whoever's... Oh, they've padlocked it down. Look, this is how much they uh, care about their seating position. This is Mete. There's the first corner down there. The jump, the hairpin. You can see almost all of the track. Joe Collat merge is, is usually pretty good. And uh, we cross the finish line here. There's going to be two winners in World RX this weekend. RX3, RX2E and Euro RX1 as well, doing a single header across both days. I cannot wait to get this weekend underway. It feels like a long time since Hungary. And uh, yeah, make sure to watch all of it on Rally TV.